Uh, we've got um, some traps here, but we've also got some um, cards on the extra deck here. Is there a main difference between the traps that you get into in the main deck that you've put in the main deck here and the contract cards in the extra deck? Yep, there's actually a big difference. The dark contract cards, which were originally, which originally actually like their name were uh, the covenants. Covenants. What do you mean by covenants? Yeah. Kind of like a the, like a covenant of the lost ark or something like that. Like they're based. These guys are basically contracts that you fulfill with uh, your archetype. So if at the cost at the cost of uh, they give you powerful effects. However, during each of your standby phases, you'll pay a thousand life points. So it seems. Um, I mean, if I was to put this into say like uh, Dark Souls term, you make a covenant and you join that group. Um, are there direct relations to what covenants they're making in Yu-Gi-Oh already? Uh, someone, I guess you could say. Like, um, I'm looking at, not to jump ahead too much, but I'm looking at Dark Contract with the Swamp King. That's making me think of uh, King of the Swamp. Is that King of the Swamp that they're actually making a contract with? I think and, so. Like, uh, contract with the Witch. That reminds me of Cosmodo Witch, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really make sense because of the I feather. Know, I know, I know. Who knows? We're I, just speculating. I, anyway. That's, that's, that's Yu-Gi-Oh! artwork for you. Anyway, so the first dark contract is dark contract with the gate. Which oh, are you? I'm just gonna so read are you off. Doing all... those ones, or are you doing the traps in the extra, in the main deck? I'll do the con I'm doing the dark contracts gotcha. first. Okay. Anyway, so the dark contract wants the dark contract with the gate. I'll just be reading off what they make, what they mostly do. Since I basically read off that they all do, they practically all do yeah. burn. Dark contract with the gate is basically a rota for the archetype, which it sorely needs. Yep, during your main phase, you during your main phase as long as this card is up, you get to add a DD monster from your deck to your hand. Cool, cool. And unlike popular belief, this card does not stack with other copies of itself. Oh, so you won't take multiple burn? Yeah. Really all having multiple copies will do is give you more burn. Oh, so it does stack the burn, but um you can't activate it more than once. To such. Yeah, you can't activate more gotcha. than once. Alright yeah. then. Next, Dark Hunter with the Swamp King. This card is a fusion card. It's basically their uh, poly, I guess you could say. I'm going to put my money down and say this is King of the Swamp, now that you've said this, it's the poly card. Yep. And during your main phase, you can fuse someone on Fusion Time mo Fusion Monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or inside the field as fusion material. However, if you're special summoning a DD fusion monster this way, you can also banish monsters from your graveyard as fusion material. Cool. That basically, that basically lets you do a lot more plays than a normal poly. Absolutely, it's a miracle and a, a poly card only one. Now, well, whereas gate is it normally a th is normally a uh, three of gate or swamp king, I've seen run mostly at one or two, primarily depending on if you're playing pot of desires. I see. Because really, one copy is what you need if you're not running desires. But two copies in case of the risk of if you banish your Swamp King. Gotcha. Anyway, so next we have Dark Contract with the Witch. A continuous trap card that reads that you could send a DD or Dark Contract card from your hand to the graveyard, target a card on the field, and destroy it. And during your opponent's turn, all fiend type monsters you control will gain a thousand attack. Now, is this used often? I, it can't it can be used as a good way of uh, disruption by just uh, setting out a card like say you have like, a necro slime in your hand you can just use a witch to send it out to pop a card your opponent controls like struggle mm -hmm. to play but, you, but usually this is a one of if anything yeah I would expect that because it's a continuous trap it might be seen a bit as a bit slow yeah trap the trap cards can be seen as a bit slower speaking of trap cards next we have dark contract with errors. Which is based, which uh, in layman's terms, if you control a DD monster, is a mass trap stun that you can use on either player's turn. Oh, nice. That seems decent. Yep. Um, and I like, I like, I just like the card art real quick because, like, it, it shows the contract and you can see Fiendish Chain and what looks like someone's about to stab Fiendish yeah, Chain. It looks like it's purely specific to say, hey, none of that. Um, but again, I'm going to guess Batman. maybe one of these at the most, if any. Uh, Errors is a one-of, but I've normally seen it run in the side deck. Yeah. 
I mostly run in. I run in the main deck though because of the risk of Paleo Zoe. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah. Anyway, so then Dark Contract with the Yami Makai. Yep, that, and that is uh, King of Yami Makai right there. Dark Blade Dragon. Dark Blade and his dragon. We get, a, we get a contract with him. Anyway, so it has the same burn as the other Dark Contracts, and uh, it has two effects. During your main phase, you can target a DD Pendulum Monster in your graveyard, place it in your Pendulum Zone, or during your main phase, you place a face up DD Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to the Pendulum. Is this good? I mean, the Modern Rage deems it not so much because of the fact that it you don't really pendulum summon that much in the deck, but I could see some utility r with it in a casual build, maybe like at one of. Right, right, so it's an option. It's, it's just an option if you want to run more pendulums, if anything. Gotcha. That's an easy way to just reset your scales if your opponent tries, tries to destroy them. Next. Forbidden Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Just to see what this is. Basically, it allows you to special summon a DD monster from your hand in defense mode, but its effects will be negated. And then, once per turn, you can fusion summon a fiend type fusion monster from your extra deck. You have monsters from your hand and your field, or your field as fusion material, including the monster you special summon through with that effect. Now, the burn damage is oh. quite high. Yeah, because it's a forbidden door contract, it it burns you for two k. So, um, what we think about this one? Um, seems kind of costly. Um, it's not really. It, it's not that good, no, honestly. I don't think so either. The fact, the fact stands that once per turn, it it gives you the same fusion effect, but however, you cannot use the fusion in the grave effect, which is what makes Swamp King so good. And you have to, and you're limited in what you summon because of the fact that with Forbidden Dark Contract with Swamp King, you have to you have to use the monster that you summon from your hand as a fusion material. Right, right. So it, it seems a little bit limited. It's very limited in its potential. Okay, cool. So next one we got is Dark Contract with the Grotesque Entry. Or Entity. Oh, Entity. Oh, Which, if you entities. can see right, if you see right. Yeah. Yep, and if you see right there, that's an out that's outer guard on Narla. Huh, okay. And Narla definitely is grotesque. Yeah. Anyway, so Dark Contract with the entities. When a DD monster of the below card type is supposed to summon from the extra deck, apply the appropriate effects. If you summon a fusion monster, you gain a thousand. If you summon a synchro, your opponent can target that special summon monster with card effects. If it exceeds, you banish a card from the field or the graveyard, and if it's a pendulum, draw a card, discard a card. During your, during once per turn, during your summon phase, take 2,000. Hmm. Um, what do you think of this card? I mean, Modern Age, again, deems this card not really that worth no. it because of the fact that it's pretty specific in what the effects are. And the fact is that these are only once per turn, mind yeah. you. Like, if this card was not once per turn, I could see it definitely having a lot more utility because the fact that because the deck fusion spams a yeah, lot, for sure. you could get you would be able to gain massive life points. However, without it, eh, yeah, no, no, I, I got you. There's better uses for your space. And the last dark contract you've got is with the Eternal Darkness. Yep, with the Eternal Darkness. So while you can, while you have two TD cards in your Pendle Zone. Opponent cannot target monsters on the field with spell or trap effects. Also, they cannot tribute monsters on the field for a tribute summon, or use them as fusion, secret, or disease materials for a summon. Once per turn, during your standby phase, take a thousand. Um, um, what's your fuse on this card? Now, now at first, I thought of this card as a brand new, like, lease on life that DDs have their own domain lock. Yeah. However, unlike the domain lock, this card is pretty hard to keep up, mostly because of the fact that your opponent can just immediately destroy it with a card effect, or destroy one of your yeah. scales, because you have to have both scales filled. Exactly. So, uh, and the DD monster, unlike, even though they're supposed to be a pendulum archetype, they don't really like to fill up their scales that much. No, no, it, it seems that way. It seems like they were originally built to be a hybrid between pendulums and non-pendulums, but... 
it seems that the way you've described the cars more and more, that they don't really focus on that too much. Yeah, they don't really focus on being on their pendulum aspect as much as they do their fusion aspect. Right, right, right. So no copies of this? No copies of this right cool. now. Cool. We may, we may see we may see it arise in a later format, but I can't really see it. Okay. Anyway, so now on to our actual uh, cards, our actual trap cards. First we'll have is, uh, let's see, let's go over DDD Contract Change. Right. DDD Contract Change is a normal trap card, and when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can activate one of these two effects. Either you banish a DDD monster from your graveyard, and if you do, the attack monster will lose attack equal to the banished monster's attack. Or you bit, or you could just search your deck for a D, for a level four lower DD pendulum monster. Is that really that good, to be well, honest? But well, I monster, can see some utility. When the opponent's monster declare an attack. Um, for me, any time, um, ever since we had um, a magician circle, and that was a card when a, a monster activate a spell cast a monster is attacked or was attacked. Ever since that card was never useful. Any time I see anything like this, it's just like, eh, no. It's too slow. You don't yeah. you don't normally want to attack one uh, before you set up your board. You want to set up your board, then you want to attack. Yeah. Anyway, so next up, I would say let's see. DD recruit. Yep. DD recruit. DD recruit. If your opponent controls more monsters than you, target any number of DD monsters and or dark contract cards from your graveyard up to the difference. Add those cards to your hand. I say skip it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but more seriously, this card is just blah. The fact that your opponent has to have the advantage over you. Yeah, this card is a, is decent in the sense that it lets you come back from a from a loss. But with how with how spam focused the deck is now, they have no need for this card. Mm -hmm. No, definitely not. Next, DDD Human Resources. Which, this card I used to see a lot of in the early ages of uh, DED. Cool. Shovel three cards, shovel three cards for, in, for into your deck. By any combination of DD monsters in your hand, field, graveyard, and or your pendulum zones That's even. Nice. And, you, and then you get to search your deck immediately for two pen, for DD yeah, for two DD monsters from the deck of your hand immediately. Cool. That's a uh, pretty nice to be honest with you. Like, I could definitely, like, this card I used to use as a way to get an instant pendulum scale out in the early days. But it's actually pretty decent now. I mean, like, I can see some modern builds running it, but not many, to be honest. Huh. Because of, like I said, spam focus. Gotcha. Yeah. No, it, it, this one seems a little bit out of date, but um, it's still a nice card, to be honest, to be able to shuffle from the graveyard like that. Yep. Anyway, so next we have is DD Rebuild. Is there any stories behind the gentleman in the artwork here? That seems to be playing against each other. Uh, not, not really from what I could tell. But it does look pretty interesting. Like they're playing like a role playing. It does game. It seems like they're playing a tabletop. And like you can see uh, right next to the old man in the back of uh, DD Rebuild is a uh, pen yeah. dragon. Anyway, so with uh, DD Rebuild or DD Reroll. Our contract cards you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. You banish this card from the graveyard to target up to three of your other banished DD cards and shuffle them into the deck. While it's, while it's really great on paper, again, the modern era likes to run the spam focus build way more. Yeah, um, it doesn't seem like debellishing your cards is ever really the goal. It seems like a much slower version of Burial from a different dimension. I mean, really? It's naturally slower because it's trapped. But the deck does banish a lot of monsters. It's just the fact that you rely on your banish recycling to a trap. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we talked about... Anyway, so there's, uh, there's actually one other card that I forgot to add. Yeah. That And that is Contract Laundering. Is it worth talking about? Yep, actually, because it focuses on TV cards. It was actually your cheap... It... Yep. Contract Laundering. A normal trap card. Destroy as many dark contract cards in your spell trap zone as possible. If you do, draw the same number of cards you controlled, and then gain a thousand life points for each card you drew for this effect. 
This card was at one point the chief way to gain life points and recover from your burn of the deep, of the dark contracts. Is that something which is still important? Like I could see some casual decks play it, but really, with how much with how much the deck can spam life point gain now, dark contract, la contract laundering is sort of lost its fame. Gotcha. I still I still enjoy the card. Just like the car the guy from uh from the Imperial Order just being like. You know what? Screw these dark contracts. Yeah. Smolder them into the fire. 